Neural networks are amazing, but they have one problem, is that they require, a lot, they have a lot of parameters, and they need to have a lot of data in order to learn to solve tasks. And, you know, what is that data? Well, in the case of computer vision, this will be images that have to be annotated by humans. Who is the people annotating all these images? Well, I know one person, that is my mother, She's been labeling images since 2007. She's labeled like a million objects. Like she's probably the most experienced uh, human annotator that, else, that is out there. You know, her data has been used to train some of the machine learning systems that are being used nowadays. So she's labeling very, very hard for a long time. So this is the challenge. We have images that need to be curated with data that will teach machines how to solve particular tasks like object segmentation or, or object recognition. But the community has been working really hard in trying to make this problem a little bit less painful, and in particular, getting rid of data, getting rid of the labels that you need in order to train the machine. So what are the techniques that are being used? Well, generally, you have a pattern recognition system that tries to go from images to something like labels or segments and so on. This is what generative AI was meant to do. Generative AI was about reversing the picture, and then let's say, if we cannot train these systems because we don't have the data, what if we train systems to just produce more data? Things that look like images, and maybe in that process, they are learning something very interesting. And the community has been working on this very, very hard. And there are other techniques that you can use also in order to train systems without the need of a human having to annotate the images. And one remarkable example of that is called unsupervised contrastive learning. So let me give you a crash course on how uh, unsupervised contrastive learning works. And this is just start with a set of images. There are no labels. And then what you do is you want to train a neural network that will take as input an image, and it will give you some representation, some output that will be just a set of numbers that will represent that picture, and you want this network to have the following capability. If the input is the same image, but with some transformation, let's say I crop the image, or I translate the image, or I you know, rotate the image in some random way, I want the representation to be very similar. I want that this, the weights in this neural network will produce a representation as output that almost doesn't change under this transformation. And then if I take a completely different image, I want that the same neural network will give me a representation that will be very different from the original image. And then I can just use millions of images and play this game of training a neural network to tell me when two images are similar and when they are dissimilar. And surprisingly, this works really, really well. So now you have a neural network that has some weights that has been learned without human annotations and they are actually pretty good at solving a number of different tasks. But the problem is that despite of all the promise about getting rid of the data, these machine learning systems, they are still addicted to data. They still need a lot of data. And in particular, generative AI just still uses like millions and millions of images with captions. So what we wanted to do was to get rid of the labels, but also to get rid of the images. I just want to get rid of the whole thing and be able to train a visual representation with no data whatsoever. So you know, that's, now the crazy part of the talk starts. Uh, so what can you do here? Well, one possibility will be to use virtual environments where what you have is synthetic images. These are not real images. This is just images that you create with a virtual simulator that produces something that looks like real. And in fact, the community has also been working very, very hard in making these virtual simulations work really well. But it's still very challenging. Now, here is one of our efforts, creating an environment where agents perform different tasks, and then you can train a system to learn from this type of visual data to understand the world. And here is just an example. This character just wants to watch TV, so he's going to the couch and he's sitting down. You know, the camera viewpoint is to work out a little bit you know, here. And now he has to drink, and you know, it doesn't know where the mouth is. <laughs> you know. Simulating these things requires a lot of work. You need to get all the details right. You, know, you need to know about shadows and illumination and so on, but also about common sense, the fact that you, know, you drink with your mouth, you pick up things with your hands, and so on. So you need to integrate all these details into these virtual simulations, which means that that's almost as much work as annotating images. So we are not, you know, this is not going to address the problem. So how do you do something if you don't want to use virtual environments either? Like no data, no virtual environments, what do you do? Well, 
what if we just don't train the network? Just put random weights, you know, all the random connections, all the connections that connect the different neurons in this neural network will just be random numbers. There is no training whatsoever. It's still going to compute something, and we'll use that as a representation. And in fact, you know, one way of checking how good a visual representation is, is by solving the problem of nearest neighbors. You take some images, you have a big database of images, and you ask the neural network to tell you for a particular image, which other images in your database look alike. So here there are five images as input, and then the neural network will look at the representations of all of the other images in your database, and will pull out the images that had the closer representation. So if we do that with a network that has not been trained, this is what we get. Which, okay, it's not very good. It's just, well, it, it seems to be getting the colors right, but that's about it. No, this is not a very good representation. So what else can we do? Well, you know, what we really want to do is we still want to learn with something. And the question that we had is, can we learn by just looking at something very silly, like noise? And by noise, I don't really mean this. Like, this is just the noise that you will have on a TV if it was not synchronized. It will be noise, but with more structure, but it's still noise. So we can actually get inspiration from generative models in the brain. And it turns out that if you look at unborn animals, there seems to be something going on in their eyes. So these are videos recorded in the retina of mice before they are born. And you can see that there seems to be some spontaneous activity in these uh, photoreceptors, producing something that looks like movies. But it's, it's not noise. It, there seems to be some structure, things, waves that seem to be moving around. But it's not very, you know, it doesn't contain any objects. There is nothing very useful here. So the question is, can we generate processes that look like that, that have some structure that can teach us about vision? So there are processes like that that people have been studying for a long time in computer vision. And this one in particular comes from the 60s. And it's to say that images are just made out of squares on top of other squares. And this is what is called the dead list model. So images just look like this. So what if you were to train on this type of world and you have never seen real images, you train here, what will happen? You start with your images as input, and now you compute this visual representation, learn from those type of images, and you get this. OK, you know, it seems that we haven't really improved much. This is slightly better, but this is not, you know, it's really not good. So what else can we do? We can create retinal waves, something that looks like retinal waves in a much more powerful way. And there are a lot of people in, 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 in the community that has created these really cool visualizations that look like this. These are images that are not real. These are very simple visual worlds. But you can learn with those. And you can learn very good visual representations to the point that if I give you these five images as input, the visual representation gives, retrieves these as neighbors. And now they are really, really good. And what is surprising is that this neural network has never seen any real image. It's only been trained with those noise and strange processes. So you know, we got rid of labels. We got rid of images. You know, I just want to get rid of the whole thing. And I hope that at some point, the evolution of data sets in computer vision is going to look from growing into bigger and bigger data sets over time to the point that at some point, just data sets become zero. There is no data, and you just learn almost everything before you are born. Thank you. <laughs>